in this video, I'm going to go through testing for differences in proportions between two groups. So the example is the following. Two groups, the NDP and the Liberal supporters, have been polled and asked whether they are in favor of the LNG natural gas pipeline. So we have 90 out of the 224 for NDP supporters who responded yes. And we have 112 out of the 206 Liberals who responded yes. So question, is there sufficient evidence at the 2% level significance to conclude there is a difference in the proportions of people who support the pipeline between these two groups? Okay, so again, this is going to be a hypothesis test we're performing. And let's go and start on that. Okay, so um, let's start by defining our null and our alternative hypotheses. So null is going to be that P1 minus P2 equals zero. Alternative will be that P1 minus P2 is not zero. When we're trying to conclude whether or not there is a difference, then we use this not equal to symbol. Beautiful. Now let's go think about what we want P1 and P2 to be. When we have this two-tailed problem, it doesn't actually matter which one we pick as P1 and P2. Let's just do them in the order that they were listed. So NDPs, we're going to call them sample one, and they're 98 out of 224, giving a sample proportion result of 98 out of 224. And let's see what that gives us. Okay. So that gives us 43.75% or point. 4375. Our second proportion is going to be the liberal supporters, and it's 112 out of 206 of them who are in favor. So that puts our second sample proportion at, this gives 55.8%, or let's just write it in decimal form, 2.55. Eight, three. Beautiful. So now we can do a little diagram here too of what we're trying to prove. We're trying to do a, a, a two sample, um, two tailed um, proportion test. So let's just do a quick diagram. And this is what we're actually going to end up with. Um, and these are going to be our actual uh, p-value results. Which puts us at 1.28% between the two sides. This is going to be our ending result. So a little bit of a spoiler alert here. Um, I'm just going to pause and um, grab this diagram. But I'll keep it a bit simpler and put it in our example. Beautiful. Okay, so here is a little bit of a, a simpler version of that diagram. Uh, and again, we can see we have this two-tailed problem. Um, where alpha, in our case, is 2%, which gets split between the two tails. So this 1% is actually alpha over 2. Beautiful. Okay. Now, um, next thing we need to go do is get our test statistic. So let's just move this down here. Oops. Beautiful. Okay. So um, now to get our test statistic, our Z test, if you will, we're just going to go and do this beautiful formula here. P1 bar minus P2 bar all divided by, I'm just gonna get this guy out of the way here too. There we go. All divided by the square root. This is quite the calculation of P bar. One minus P bar times one over N1 plus one over N2. 
I also have a video showing how to do this in Excel that is a little bit easier, but it's good to see how to do this by hand as well. Okay, and we need to go get P bar as well. So let's just go, go do that here, sorry. So P bar is gonna be the 98 plus the 112. Take the two number of successes, divide by the total number in each group. So 224 plus 206 on the bottom, and that gives us 0.49535. Okay, so that's our P bar, and that goes into the square root piece down here. Okay, oh my goodness, and I need to keep moving this guy. I'm just gonna pause and move this diagram down. Okay, and we're almost done. Wow, this square root keeps going. We do one over the first n, which is the 224, plus one over the 206, the second n. Oof, okay. Now I like to get what's on the bottom first. Just do that calculation all in one. If you're doing this on a calculator, I'd recommend storing that number, storing that number, adding them together first. Then once you've got that, store that total. Uh, go get this guy, store it. And then times this guy, this number that you've got, and then this one all together. And then once you've times them, then square root them. Quite the beast. Uh, anyways, um, okay. Now, um, on the top, we're just gonna get the difference between these two values, uh, and let's see what that gives us. Okay, negative 0 0.1208, beautiful. Okay, so when we divide those two together, we end up with negative 2.5019. Now, if we reversed, um, the P1, P2, we would get a positive Z score. It doesn't matter at all for two-tailed. Um, we just have to be careful later when we're doing our P value, what we work with. So what we wanna get with our P value, sorry, it's a bit rough. We wanna go get the area below the negative 2.5019. And then we wanna take it and times it by two. So whatever this area is, take it and times it by two, and that will give us our p-value. So how do we go get that area? So that area, to get this area here, it's actually equal to norm dot s dot dist. We're using a z-score, so we use the norm call. Uh, we're using uh, the z-score as well, so we use s for standardized. And because we have a negative z-score, we do not need to subtract from one. We want the left tail, so that's perfect. So we just do a straight equals, and then comma one for cumulative equals to true. And that gives us point zero. 0.062 or 0.62%. Okay. So times that by two because for two tailed tests, we must multiply by two. Okay, so that ends up giving us, sorry, I'm missing a zero there. 1.28% for our P value. Okay. And that's really like 0.62% on either side. Or 0.0062. Okay, so next here is to try to form or make a decision. And since this p value, which is 1.28%, 
since that's less than, oops, sorry, not 5%, there are 2% level significance. Then we reject each knot. So our decision is to reject each knot. Let's have a little look at the picture here. So this is good. So our um, this one right here is actually our test result. It's within this rejection region. So um, we reject H naught. Okay, and finally, conclusion. So what we're really trying to determine is the following here. We're trying to determine if there is a difference between the two groups. So our conclusion is that yes, there is because we rejected H naught. I'm just going to pause the video and write that out. Okay, so there is enough evidence to conclude that there is a difference between the two groups and the percentage of support for the pipeline between the two groups. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching.